This grapefruit contains citric acid, which gives it that sour or tart taste. Our stomachs contain hydrochloric acid, which allows us to break down the food we eat. We're obviously not tasting that. And coffee contains several acid types, which is why I like to add milk to mine. Perfect. But what makes an acid an acid? And what is a base? Let's find out together in this episode all about acids, bases, and the pH scale. Whether a liquid is an acid or a base, all comes down to hydrogen ions. This is going to be a very generalized explanation so we can gain a basic understanding of what's happening. An ion is just an atom or a group of atoms with an electric charge. We are going to be looking at hydrogen ions, abbreviated with this chemical symbol. Let's begin by looking at pure water, some good old H2O. A water molecule looks like this. If you need a refresher on the properties of water, you can check out this video. In pure water, there are an equal number of hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. Hydroxide is OH negative, so when hydroxide gains a hydrogen ion, it becomes H2O, pure water. Because of water's polarity and its ability to form hydrogen bonds, water is an excellent solvent. This means that it can dissolve many different kinds of molecules. In water, a small number of molecules will disassociate or split up. This means that some of the water molecules will lose a hydrogen and become hydroxide ions like we saw earlier. The lost hydrogen ions don't just stay by themselves. They will join up with water molecules to form hydronium ions. I know. This is starting to sound a little complicated. We are just going to be looking at the balance between hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions in a substance to determine if it is acidic or basic and to what degree. Simply put, an acid is a substance that donates or gives away hydrogen ions. This means that when an acid is dissolved in water, that balance between hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions we mentioned earlier has now shifted. There are now more hydrogen ions than hydroxide ions in the solution. So we now call this solution acidic. The opposite happens in a base. A base is a substance that accepts or soaks up hydrogen ions. This means that when a base is dissolved in water, that balance between the hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions has also now shifted, but in the opposite direction. Because the base soaks up hydrogen ions, the resulting solution contains more hydroxide ions than hydrogen ions. We call this kind of solution basic or alkaline. So the more hydrogen ions, the more acidic, and the less hydrogen ions, the more basic or alkaline. So what is pH? And why does it look like that? pH is just a measure of how acidic or alkaline or basic a solution is. The capital H in pH is for hydrogen, which makes sense because those hydrogen ions are what we're measuring. That lowercase p is debated. Some say p for power, power of hydrogen. And some say p for potential or percentage. It all means the same thing, really. We have learned that more hydrogen ions means that a solution is more acidic and less hydrogen ions mean that the solution is more basic. But that doesn't really give us enough information. Like there's a pretty big difference between the acid in my grapefruit from earlier and the acid in my stomach. The pH number of a solution is inversely proportional to the hydrogen ion concentration. So solutions with low pH numbers are acidic and have a higher concentration of hydrogen ions. Basic or alkaline solutions have higher pH numbers and have a lower concentration of hydrogen ions. If you're still here liking this video, let us know. And hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. To find out how much more concentrated the hydrochloric acid is in my stomach, 
than the citric acid in my grapefruit, we need to use the pH scale. The pH scale runs from zero to 14. To understand these numbers, let's quickly look back at water. Remember, in water, a small number of molecules will disassociate or split up, giving water equal number of hydrogen and hydroxide ions. So the concentration of hydrogen ions in water is one to 10 million, which is so many zeros and kind of a pain to write. So we simplify it. Water is a number seven on the pH scale because water contains an equal number of hydrogen and hydroxide ions. It's right there in the middle of the scale and neutral. Notice the seven zeros in 10 million. That's not a coincidence. That's logarithms. The pH scale is a logarithmic scale. Each one unit change in the pH scale corresponds to a 10 fold change in hydrogen ion concentration. So let's look at our hydrochloric acid and citric acid on the pH scale. Let's test a few liquids to see where they fall on the pH scale. I have universal indicator paper that will actually identify the rough pH using color change chemicals. As you can see, I already have my safety glasses on and I'm going to be wearing some gloves. It's important to observe lab safety anytime you're using potentially harmful substances like acids. Let's start out by testing our grapefruit. Grapefruit juice is a three on the pH scale. Now let's test my coffee, no milk. It looks to be between a five and a six. This first test tube is filled with hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid is at a one on the pH scale and grapefruit juice is at a three. That means that this hydrochloric acid is 100 times more acidic than the grapefruit juice. Vinegar is in this next test tube. It's a four on the pH scale. Now we are testing good old H2O. Just as expected, a neutral seven on the scale. This is baking soda in water. You can see some settled there at the bottom of the test tube. Baking soda is a nine on the pH scale. Next, we have bleach. Bleach is a 12. You have to be quick because bleach will eventually turn the indicator paper white. Lastly, we have window cleaner, which contains ammonia. This is an 11 on the pH scale. You can make your own indicator with red cabbage. Learn how in this video. Now, I really wanna find out what happens if we mix an acid and a base together. But alas, that's for another episode. If you want to learn more science, you can check out this video next.